Hi everyone, this is Delos Johnson. I am going to attempt to use this video presentation to demonstrate what I think is a fairly interesting Photoshop technique. So uh, to get started and to begin, let's go ahead and pick out a photograph. I'm going to pick the uh, frozen yellow vases uh, shot here. We'll just open this guy up. We'll accept that. First thing that I normally do uh, before starting these is to uh, select all, which is Control A on the PC and Command A on the Macintosh, and then copy that, which would be Control C. Get rid of the marching ants with a Control D. Go over to the image uh, selection here at the top uh, left hand corner of Photoshop. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the canvas size somewhat. So we'll click on canvas size. And for this first step, I'm going to change the height from 3.2 inches in this particular photograph to exactly double that to 6.4. And I want to make sure that the original photograph gets moved to the top of the frame. So we did that by clicking on the little button in the middle of this uh, grid here. And once I've done that, I'll click OK. Uh, to make things a little easy for myself, I am going to now scroll down just a bit, do a Control V to paste that image that I copied at the start of this, and go over to Edit, Transform, and I want to flip it vertically. So by flipping it vertically, you'll see that the top image and the bottom image have merged exactly uh, in the right place so there's not a line uh, visible to separate the two. Another thing you might want to notice is that in this particular image there's, there's a fair amount of detail uh, from these ice uh, formations on the vases and that's going to come in really handy uh, later on in this demonstration. So the next step for me is to go ahead and combine these two images into one. There are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, the hard way is to select layer and flatten image. Uh, the easy way is just control E and it will flatten. If you want to take a look at your whole image, just uh, a control zero will bring it out so you can see the, the full frame. So for, for what I'm about to do, we're about halfway there. Uh, as far as creating the image. The next step is I'm going to increase the horizontal dimension of the image uh, after I again control A for selecting all, control C to copy, control D to get rid of the marching ants, go to image, canvas size, and this time I'm going to double the width. So we'll change the width from 4.817 inches to uh, 9.634 9.634 and we want the the main part of the image this time to be over here on the right click OK and so there we have that <coughs> and control V to bring in the copied image I'll go ahead and transform with a flip horizontal this time and I'll just drag this guy over and it'll pretty much pop into place. This time I'll merge the uh, the layers with a control E. So now we're back to working with just one image. Now <clears throat> the next part of this is, is a duplication process and I've automated duplication uh, using an action. So you can see it's uh, over here on the side is duplicate layer uh, and I'm going to use a 20 degree uh, rotation for each for each step. This probably won't make a lot of sense but uh, hopefully it'll make some sense. So now we'll uh, just play the uh, we'll select the, the mode and then we'll play it and you'll see that we have a background copy that's up and it's tilted about 20 degrees. I'm going to do this several more times. And really the number of times you do this is totally dependent on the effect that you're trying to achieve. Uh, 
for this this one I'm going to go a little nuts and go uh, make make eight copies on it. So I'll just play, play, play eight. If I click it one more time, we'll just be back to the vertical position and it'll be exactly the same. So there's no need to go any further here. Now, here is where the magic begins to happen. We've got all of these uh, these images combined uh, placed in layers. Now, using the shift key, I'll press shift, scroll down, uh, take my cursor down to the background, click on the background, then we have all the layers selected. I'll right click and convert to smart object. Converting to smart object is that is an absolutely necessary step here. Um, while I've got this next, I will change once again the canvas size because I really want to see the whole the whole image. So we have the width set to 9.6. I have no idea what the proper size should be for this canvas, so I'm just going to take it out here to 12 wide. And I'm going to take it here to 12 high. Click OK. Then Control O to take a look at what the uh, what the image full sized image looks like. And it looks like 12 was a good guess on my part. Now again, we're working with a smart object. Here comes the magic. You go to the layer drop down. Go to Smart Objects. Select stack mode, which is maybe something you've never seen before. And you'll see that in the stack mode you have a, a whole selection of, of choices. Uh, entropy, kurtosis, maximum, mean, medium. Really the, the, the more useful ones are, are the mean, the median, the minimum, Occasionally the maximum, sometimes a range, and sometimes standard deviation, and every once in a while variance. Uh, the, the summation, kurtosis, and entropy, well, in, in my experience, have been pretty useless. So, so this is more experimentation and getting the final effect that you like more than it is uh, just rocket science. So first thing I'm going to try with this is let's just go down to standard deviation and take a look and see what happens. So I'll click on standard deviation and now Photoshop begins doing some math and here's the final result from standard deviation. I can either accept that or if I don't like it I can go back up to the layers panel uh, panel again, go to smart objects, back to stack mode, maybe see what it looks like with the range selected. So now I'll go to range, click on range, does its math, and you come up with this kind of an image. So you get the idea just by playing with layers, smart objects, and the stack mode that you're going to get a variety of, of, of final of products and you select which one would be the final product that you like the best. So in this particular instance uh, this is pretty much it. You can copy it as you would any uh, any standard image and save it. You can play with it to your heart's content. Uh, what I might do with this one uh, just for, for for giggles maybe is uh, go up here to the filters menu go into the topaz and I've got adjust 5 on this computer we'll let adjust 5 do its thing and it's sort of looking here at the last image that I uh, that I used in adjust and I kinda like that this would be I think this is the spiceify or sp specify as the uh, people at Topaz like to call it. But you're not limited to that. You can select any any one of these choices and whatever you're happy with you can click OK. And the nice thing about Adjust 5 is it automatically makes a separate layer for you. 
and you can change the um, the opacity of that layer uh, to get the, the result that you like. So hopefully I haven't rambled on too much and uh, you get the idea of how quick and easy it is to make one of these uh, one of these mandalas and in Photoshop can't do it as far as I know in elements or other uh, image processing software so you're, if you've got Photoshop virtually any version I think has the uh, has the command under the layers drop down again smart objects only and the stack mode. That's it. I hope this thing makes sense to you. Um, let me know if you uh, if you need more information.